everybody, Sam Strains here. Welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Today I'm going to be having another look at probably my favourite train pack of all time. And it's this, which is the Backman. Oh, this is tricky to hold up. It's the Backman World War II Ambulance Train. And as I say, yes, I did review this once before. Um, it was when I got it, about two years ago. And as always with my older reviews, I don't feel that I did a great job of reviewing them. So I decided I'm gonna do this one again today. And also for those of you who weren't around uh, on my channel when I first reviewed this, uh, I thought this would give you a nice opportunity to see this because it is such a fantastic set. So I'm gonna be unboxing this today. I'm gonna be showing you everything about it. And I hope you're really gonna enjoy it because as I say, it really, really is a great set. So hope you enjoy the video, let's get to it. And I bought this from Butterley at the uh, Midland Railex. It would have been two years ago, I think, and I think at that time they had a bit of a war trains theme going on. And I bought this, it was reduced, I think it was about 125 to 130 pounds. You know, I can't remember exactly. And I thought that was a pretty good price because you do get three coaches and a loco with this, which is quite nice. Okay, let's have a look at the box then. So specifically, this is the First World War ambulance train uh, number 40. Yes, this, this is the 40th ambulance train. Special commemorative edition and it says here contains a GWR City Class 3711 City of Birmingham, three Midland Railway ambulance coaches and a pack of World War I medical staff and soldier figures. So we'll be seeing all of that in just a second. But first of all, I wanted to take a few minutes just to look at the box because it really is a work of art. It's a proper collector's edition, beautiful box with loads of information, photos and history and such. So as you can see on the front, you've got what I would say is like a digital painting of the City of Birmingham loco, the three 700 class and also a couple of the coaches there such a beautiful uh, drawing really to be honest and uh, just in case you're interested this is 30-325 that's the product number if you wanted to look it up these are still available I think online if you go and have a look so uh, if you're interested uh, do that okay I'm going to show you the back of the box because there's so much stuff on there Okay, so in the middle you can see there's a whole bit of information about the ambulance trains of the First World War, which is definitely worth looking at. Uh, but there's loads of photos as well, so you've got uh, a load of the uh, troops here in, uh, at a station in Birmingham, I think it says, um, being uh, loaded onto the train or something like that. And then down here you've got uh, a view of actually inside one of the ambulance coaches, so that's quite nice to see. Uh, there you've got one of the nurses or something uh, lighting a cigarette for one of the soldiers. And uh, here at the top you've actually got uh, one of the wounded being loaded onto one of the coaches which I think is quite interesting so yeah a really really rich and interesting box for sure and uh, I really enjoyed looking at that and uh, okay I think it's just about time to get this off uh, I must say though the box is really really quality it's really sturdy um, yeah very very thick cardboard this is right take the lid off and even on the inside, as you can see, there's just loads to look at. So you've got a photo here, I think this it says here, it's the Royal Army Medical Corps loading some of the wounded onto the train. So, uh, yes. Right, let's have a look at what you get inside here then. So obviously we've got the City of Birmingham locomotive in that uh, beautiful khaki livery. And it's a 440 locomotive, uh, known as the City Class as well, I suppose. Uh, one of my favourite classes, actually, just because they are so beautiful. And then, of course, you've got the three uh, coaches, which I'm going to talk about in a second. It'll be easy to talk about those once they're out and uh, then also you've got the figures here as you can see uh, World War One medical staff and soldiers quite interesting and if I just take this top bit off it makes things a little bit easier to get out right the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, lift this lot out if I can and show you what's underneath because you've got uh, the paperwork and such oh, what's this oh the, the branch line guide to model railways huh. I've seen that before I don't think I can't remember that's quite interesting. Anyway, yeah, you've got the instructions here. So uh, this is for the city of Truro. So obviously they just used the uh, the same model and uh, painted it up differently. Uh, yeah, running in curves, body removal, all that stuff. And uh, on the back you can see, yep, yeah, that's the exploded diagram of the loco. And I have actually had this one apart because I've had it for so long, um, what, a couple of years. I have had it apart for servicing. So yes, I know what I'm doing with that really, but that's nice to have. Right, I'll pop this all stuff back in. Okay, let's have a look at some of this stuff then. Alright, let's have a look at the figures first then, shall we? Because these are quite nice. 
haven't ever been out of the packaging. I think I will leave them in. So there they are, as you can see inside there, you've got a couple of soldiers. They look all right to me. Uh, then you've got a couple of the medical staff and then you've got some more soldiers which don't look quite so all right. <laughs> they're a bit wounded, I think. You've got uh, arms in sling, that one's got a bandage on his head or something, but they really are beautifully painted. You can clearly see all of the buttons on their shirts and things and their badges on their sleeves. It really is uh, beautifully done. Uh, so that's why I'm not going to take these out. I think I don't want to spoil them by putting them on the layout. But there's all sorts of stuff you could do. Um, you could put them in the coaches, I suppose, or you could uh, make a little war scene um, on the side of the layout. I don't know. You, you could do all sorts of stuff. Okay, let's have a look at the detail packs then, which are in here. Now, the first lot you get are these, and I believe these are doors that go on the end of the coaches. Uh, the coaches come with sort of like rubberized connectors but I suppose for any reason if you wanted to take those off and uh, close them off uh, you could do and it's nice to have the option with those but uh, I'm gonna leave them in the bag okay and in the other detail pack it's quite unusual actually because you appear to have a spare front bogey um, body I don't know what you call it it's like the covering that goes over the front wheels anyway I can't see any difference to the one that's fitted to be honest so I wonder if they've just given you a spare hmm. But inside here anyway, you've got loads of other stuff. You've got uh, shovels and things for the tender, brake rigging, uh, chain link coupling, screws, spare handles to go onto the tender. It really is uh, very nice that they've given you so many spare parts. And uh, there's also a housing there for the speaker if you wanted to set this up for DCC sound. So yeah, that is brilliant. Right, let's start getting some of this other stuff out then. Let's start with the coaches. Get this bottom one out first. Right, so there you have it, as you can see, very nicely painted, and I'm going to look at these in a little bit more detail. I was a little bit disappointed with these coaches, um, firstly because they don't have NEM couplings, they've just got these things that are screwed on, and I thought all modern coaches had NEM pockets, but uh, no, fair enough. And the other really disappointing thing is the fact that uh, inside, you haven't got the ambulance set up or anything like that, it really just is uh, seats, as you would get in a normal corridor coach. And I think that's a shame because they've gone to all the trouble of uh, setting this up so beautifully. They've even showed you the interior of one of these coaches on the box. And yet they weren't able to go the last bit of that extra mile and uh, detail the interiors of the coaches. But I think that's really the only problem I do have with the set. Apart from that, it really is impressive. There we go. Get the second one out. As you can see, they've got these uh, hospital uh, ambulance transfers on them, which is quite interesting to see. Yep, very nice. Let's get the last one then. This is the other end one. Um, as you can see, yeah, it's got the 40th ambulance train written on the end. But uh, yep, yeah, there it is. Uh, they're all basically the same. You've just got uh, the different doors on different ends and that sort of thing. But uh, we'll look at all that later on. Okay, let's get the loco out. And as I say, this is one of my favorites. Um, it is a bit awkward to get out, actually. I'm just thinking the best way to do this. Try and pull it out with the, uh, the plastic that's around it. I don't think that's gonna work. So I'm just gonna lift it out very gingerly and the tender. <laughs> now, I had a big faff with this when I first got it, and I'll tell you why. Hang on. Right, I've got it. Yeah, the thing is, right, as you can see, the tender and loco are now connected by a wire. But when I first got this, this uh, wire wasn't plugged in. And as you can see, annoyingly, the plug on the tender is way behind the first axle for some reason, uh, which makes it really annoying to plug in, because actually you've got to take out this uh, first wheel to get the wire underneath. The wire is far longer than it needs to be, so it took a lot of work to stop that wire fouling up the loco as it ran, but uh, apart from that it is just fine, as you can see, beautiful in the khaki livery. Normally you'd get these in the sort of Great Western Green, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, but uh, somewhat unusually you do have that khaki livery, which actually suits it quite nicely I think, although I do prefer the green. So there it is, I'm going to review the loco and uh, one of the coaches I think in just a second, but uh, first of all then, here's a little bit of history on the ambulance trains and also a little bit of history on the 3700 class. So here we go. Some shout outs to begin with then. So we've got Epic Ryan 10, Jesse Hoody and Ashes Kingdom. Thank you very much for getting in touch and I hope you enjoy the video. So the World War I ambulance trains were designed to be converted from existing rolling stock and in this set, as you can see, uh, Midland Calestri coaches were used in addition to one of the Great Western 3700 class locos, uh, known at the time for their speed and versatility, which presumably is why those were chosen. 
Although only 12 ambulance trains were ordered initially, many, many more were formed over the war years, and this particular one, as we know, uh, was the 40th, so that gives you a some idea of how many there were. And the 40th ambulance train came from the Midland Railway in 1917, and was possibly even sent to Europe, where it would have helped troops in France, or that sort of thing. And, of course, the 3700 class of locomotive, or the city class as it's also known, was introduced in 1902 and produced until 1909, which means that actually this loco, the city of Birmingham, would have been in service for several years before its conversion. Um, but, uh, yeah, as I say, they were the perfect choice, I suppose. Twenty of the class were produced to the design of George Jackson Churchward, yet only one was preserved, and that one is the most famous, of course, uh, City of Truro. So here's the loco then, 3711, City of Birmingham, up against the white background, and it really, really is beautiful, isn't it? The class just were. Uh, even the fact that it's in the khaki livery, which I don't prefer over the Great Western Green. Um, obviously, I realise why they've done it, and I think it is beautiful, but uh, yeah, that's just personal preference. Uh, so yeah, even though it is in that livery, I think it really is a stunning, beautiful model, and it's also a real quality model as well. Uh, now, I believe the chassis and uh, running board here are made of cast metal, although unfortunately the body isn't. But I think that's fair enough because at least it has the weight. Uh, but yeah, as I say, quality, it seems like a quality model and it sort of has to be because it didn't come in a block of ice packaging or anything like that. So to be wrestling it in and out of polystyrene packaging like that, it really does need to have a degree of uh, sturdiness to it and this one absolutely does. Okay, let's have a look at some of the details then. Um, let's have a look at the paintwork first. It is quite basic compared with the Great Western Green. You don't have any of the lining on the boiler or anything like that. But you do have this lovely sort of golden accenting over the wheel arches there, which is just beautifully painted. And you can see hints of that colour scheme um, all over it, really, uh, on the side of the cab here. You can see it there. And uh, you've got the running number there, which has been very nicely applied, 3711, as you can tell. And all around the area, you've got separately uh, fitted handrails there. You've got another handrail on the side here, which has been separately painted white. And you've got the City of Birmingham nameplate there, which again is just very nicely applied. I can't even tell that that isn't etched. I'd, I wouldn't have thought it would be an etched nameplate, but it looks real good quality. And below there you can see what look like springs. I'm not 100% sure why you'd have springs there. Are those for the driving wheels somehow? Yeah. Maybe, possibly something like that. I must admit, I'm no expert when it comes to that. Below there you can see a badge, which I believe has something to do with the Great Western on it there. But uh, knowing Backman, it absolutely will be legible, so that is perfect. A very interesting thing about the uh, City class, of course, is the fact that the connecting rods here are uh, on the outside. They're way out. I mean, if you look down on it from above, especially when it's running, actually, uh, it really is very unusual looking. Uh, it doesn't look so strange from the side, but certainly from above, as you can tell, it really does. Just something worthy of note. I thought it'd be worth mentioning that. The front bogey is fairly nicely detailed as well, and uh, this is that casing that I've got two of, so if anything happens to that, I'll be able to replace it. But yeah, little painted parts on there, as you can see. The smoke box door has a separately fitted smoke box dart, but no extra painting on there or anything, but I suppose that's probably prototypical. And as you can see, the front buffer beam is fairly nicely detailed, although unfortunately the buffers on this one aren't sprung. And I'm not absolutely certain whether they would have been sprung in real life, possibly, yeah, during the 1910s. Maybe they won't have been sprung, so I'm not absolutely certain. But you do have separately fitted lamp irons there, which are very, very lovely to see, of course. And up on the top, you can see we have this... Uh, I'm just trying to work out whether this chimney is made of metal. I think it is. You've got a copper chimney, as you can tell. Well, it's certainly painted copper anyway. And then you've got the safety valves, which again uh, are just plastic, but you can see there is a little bit of detailing inside there. And then just in front of the cab you have the whistles, which are made of metal, and that is a very, very nice touch because a few of the ones I've been looking at recently were just plastic, but it's nice to see that they're metal. Unfortunately, the valve gear is quite basic, but there is a little bit of moulded detail just underneath the boiler there, so I suppose that is quite nice to see. I'll show you inside the cab then because it's a very, very exposed cab, so it is, of course, very important that that is nicely detailed. And it is. There is a lot of detail inside there, especially the gauges. The gauges have the printing on them and such. And there's all sorts. You can see the bell there. You can see the reverser, which is separately painted. You can see the regulator and the gauges. Yeah, it's a really, really nice cab. Not the best in the world. I have seen a few that are even more detailed than that, but it certainly is uh, well above average, I would say.
So yes, generally the detail is very, very nice. As you can see, there's plenty of moulded detail, especially around the smoke box. There's loads of riveting going on there, as you can see. And the running board has got loads of detail on it with loads of separately fitted parts, little handrails and steps and all that sort of good stuff. Yes, for a train pack locomotive, which you would sometimes expect to be on the uh, on the cheap side, especially with the Hornby ones, sometimes they get a little bit on the cheap side, don't they? Considering that, it is really, really nicely detailed, and I love it, I think it's safe to say. Okay, let's look at the tender then, and this is a real classic Great Western old-fashioned tender, isn't it? Same sort of khaki livery with the Great Western font on the side there, looks very nicely applied, I must admit. Again, you've got similar sorts of underframe detail there, you can see the suspension springs have a little bit of painting on them there, and you can even see under there there is a water scoop, which is uh, quite interesting, of course uh, that was so that the tender could pick up water on the go. Up on the top you can see the coal is quite glossy, as it always is with Backman. Um, not too realistic that, but again it's quite a stylistic choice and I do quite like the look of that. There's a fair amount of painted detail on the tender as well, as you can see just where it would uh, connect to the cab there's all sorts of painted pipework there, and of course you've got the separately fitted brake controls as well, which is very very nice to see. Around the back you've got more lamp irons which are still intact all these years later, which is good. Well it's only been two years, but knowing me you shouldn't take that for granted. And also you can see you've got the uh, handrails there which are separately fitted. So yes, generally a superbly detailed model, it really really is, and it's quality as well, you know, nothing's broken off it and as I say it's not the most protective packaging in the world uh, so considering that I think it is very very good okay well that's the loco loads more detail on there that I didn't talk about you've got the glazed windows and, and the metal handrails on the firebox you know there's so much to talk about but hopefully you get the picture with that uh, so I'm gonna move this out the way and stick one of the coaches in so that you can see that Okay, so here's one of the coaches then, and you can tell this is the end one because it's got the 40th ambulance train written on the end there in the big paint. And what I really like about these is that it just looks like they have been converted from normal coaches, and that's probably what Bagman have done actually as well. But yeah, as you can see with the Red Cross logos, you can see they've just been painted straight on, uh, straight over those uh, little air intake things on the roof there. And on the side, there's even been a little bit gone on the windows, which uh, to me just makes it look like it was done in a hurry, you know, as a wartime emergency or something like that I think that is really really cool and uh, yeah as you can see it's very nicely detailed to be honest you've got the little uh, 40th or whatever that is on the side there just to show the number of the train and uh, all of the handrails on the doors and such are picked out in the paint which is very very nice and the corridor connectors as you can see here are actually made of rubber which is quite a nice touch so obviously those are separately fitted which is a very nice touch no sprung buffers on the coaches or anything like that and of course the loco didn't have those either which is a little bit of a shame and the other thing that's a bit of a shame is the interior of course um, and it says on the box of the train pack authentically detailed model well I think the fact that you've just got to you know compartments inside there with seats uh, is a little bit of a flaw in the authenticity of the model isn't it and uh, yeah I think it's quite a lot of money to spend isn't it I mean it's good value don't get me wrong but if you're spending that kind of money on such a train pack you would probably want that to be right wouldn't you but never mind, it's only a minor complaint, and uh, like I said earlier, it's probably the only issue with the, uh, the pack itself. Okay, well I'm not going to make you look at this coach for any longer because I know you want to see the whole thing run, so let's get it all down onto the track and test the performance, shall we? So there she is then, the very, very lovely city of Birmingham, down onto the track, ready to be tested. And a little way up the line, you can see I've put the coaches. I think they're all going the right way. And of course, she's going to couple to those in just a second. So let's talk about performance then. And uh, the mechanism in this loco is quite interesting. Of course, normally with uh, steam locomotives in double O gauge, you have just the one driven wheel, and uh, then the rest of the driving wheels are linked with the, uh, the rods here, as you can see. Well, this model isn't like that. Actually, both wheels are driven with the gears and uh, the rods here are really just uh, dummies and I'm not 100% sure why they've done that. I assume that just because they are on the outside these rods would be a little bit too flimsy to be relied on to drive the wheel set so uh, I suppose that's why they've done it. Uh, nonetheless she still runs very very well as some of you might already know so let's whoa 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 she's going already. The controller wasn't off actually. <laughs> Spoiled the surprise. Okay let's give her a little bit of juice this time and see if we can get her to crawl. There we go, she's kicked in there, and of course this has been running, and she has been warming up today. But as you can see, although there are other locos out there that will do a lot better job, that is a very, very good slow speed. It's a good crawl, let's see if she'll do it just as well backwards, I'm sure she will. So, as you can tell, as I'm sure you can tell, 
Um, she does run just as beautifully as she looks. Nice and quiet as well. She's got quite a, a sound to her. It's not a loud noise, but it's quite a unique sound, I would say. I don't know whether that's coming across. Bit of a creaky sound, but I like that. It makes it sound old-fashioned. <laughs> okay, let's go and couple then. See how this goes. The couplings are good on this, though. No drooping or anything like that, so it should be nice and easy. Oh, yes. No problem there. Right, I think she's ready to go then. Obviously, three coaches isn't a lot for her, but I must say that this loco is fairly powerful for a 440. I do love 440s, as you know. I think the 440 is probably my favourite wheel configuration. Look at that. Right, I'll show you what else is going to be running alongside her then. I'm going to be running a few other war trains today. Uh, not necessarily World War I trains. Uh, this is the B-12, which I suppose is more like World War II, but possibly they would have been around towards the uh, final years of the First World War, but that's pulling a mixed train, as they might have had to back in the wartime. And on the inner line, as you're about to see, this is a loco that will have lived through both World Wars, although it's not in a wartime livery. It's the C-Class, and once again she is pulling a mixed train, uh, just to, in keeping with the wartime theme of today. And uh, while you're watching these run, keep an eye out elsewhere on the layout and see what other war trains you can spot. There's the B12 going quite quick with its mixed train. And here, of course, is the very lovely ambulance train. It's so unusual, isn't it? <laughs> yes, I do love it. I mean, the khaki livery is... Uh, I can't think of any other models that were done in that. I think there was an 8F, wasn't there, that Backman did? Was it an 8F? It was a 280, I think. Sort of an austerity sort of thing. But yes, it, it does look very lovely on that, I must admit. There's the C-Class. Very elegant, that one. Lovely 060, of course. Again, nice mixed train. Unfortunately, though, the khaki livery does make me want to get one of the uh, the lovely lined Great Western ones, which are a bit tricky to get hold of. So I hope Backman do produce those again one day, because they are they are tricky to get hold of these days. Love those old triangle locos as well. Not very often I get those going, but I ought to. I can follow her for a little while. So yeah, let me know if I should try and get one of those in the green. And it might be nice to do some double heading if I ever manage to. Oh, that's a nice idea. It's <laughs> one that's going to cost me some money though. Never mind, I suppose that's the way it is in this hobby, isn't it? It does make me wonder what other sort of war trains are out there though, in double O gauge. I mean special ones, I mean obviously. There are lots of engines in the war, but I wonder if there are any other train packs or anything like that for the war. I think there is one, isn't there? Was the one... Return from Dunkirk or something like that? Have I made that up? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, it does just look—it does look great, though, doesn't it? And what a good idea as well. I wonder how Backman got the idea to make an ambulance train. It's been very—I mean, it's gone down well, hasn't it? Loads of people have got them that I've seen, including me. The reason I bought it originally is because I wanted a 440 City Class and just like today, to get one in the green was so expensive it would have cost about the same as the whole train pack so I just went with the train pack and I'm glad I did because it is, it is my favourite train pack as I say. <laughs> Here it comes racing down the line. Oh beautiful.
So here are my ratings then on the Backman Ambulance Train Pack. I've given the detail 7 out of 10. I give the Loco 9 and the Coaches 5 because uh, that really was a bit annoying, wasn't it, about the interiors. Which averages 7, so not too bad on the detail. Performance 9 out of 10. The, the Loco does such a good job at slow speeds and it's reasonably powerful too for a 440. So quite a good score there. Character, 10 out of 10. I think it is full of character. Of course it is. I just love these uh, World War trains. So, uh, yes, full mocks on the character. Again, build quality, 10 out of 10. I really can't fault the quality. Uh, nothing's fallen to pieces after all these years. It's all still uh, intact. And it seems to be fairly sturdy, too. So, uh, very good mocks there. Value, I thought this was pretty good, especially for £130. So, no complaints there. 8 out of 10. Overall, then, that gives this set 8.12 out of 10. And let's put it into the rankings. 34th, just above. James and below the Jinty. Alright then folks, hope you enjoyed that, I really did actually, it's been nice to get the old train back out again and it's been a long time since I've seen all those photographs and the figures and things so uh, yes I did enjoy doing that. Uh, so I hope you did as well, if you did enjoy the video please feel free to leave it a like or even a comment because I do love it when you guys get in touch. And also don't forget that I have my model maintenance service so if you have any loco trouble just send me an email to samstrains at outlook.com or look me up on eBay and I'd be very very glad to help you out. Uh, but for now yeah I think that's just about all I've got to say. Don't forget to check out the Facebook and Twitter pages, the links for that are below. And that's it so thanks for your company folks and I will see you next time. Cheers everybody.